Hello guys, in this script demo, I'm going to show you a script written by this man called Rajat. And this script is available on the official AutoHockey website in the URL that you see up there. This script allows you to create a tooltip that looks like this. And once you click on any of these items, it will launch programs, folders, commands, and etc. that you have created for these items. So if I click Notepad, it's going to open up Notepad. So it kind of works like the menu command, but it uses a tooltip. If you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. I did make some minor tweaks to this uh, script. It's slightly different to the original, but almost about the same. And I kept all the comments in here as well and added a few comments to explain what each of the lines do. And the change that I, changes that I have made are that it used to require a long press of the mouse click and it was a middle button. I changed it to control and R button and obviously can change the hotkey to whatever you want. And so just to really quickly show you how it works again, if you run the hotkey control R button, it brings up the tooltip. And if you select the top one, then nothing happens. If you select the other ones, calculator notepad section 345 just creates a message box that says the section number. And those are pretty much reserved for you to add your own command or shortcuts to the program or folders and etc. whatever you want to do with the items. So I'll just quickly run through the lines of codes and show you how I can update or add new items to the tooltip and tie your commands to those items. If you don't need the explanation, then feel absolutely free to go to my website to get the script and start using it. So. The menu title is that, and that is just the top line that you see here. Set format is to set the format of the numbers that come after this line. It, I don't think it's required. I, I took it out and still worked fine. Set batch lines. This is a really old script. So maybe back then when this script was created, you needed to do this, but this is the default uh, millisecond of delay for batch lines and then set title match mode is set to partial match and that is required for the dynamic menu which I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, there's a lot of comments in this script and uh, in the original script that is I just kept them there. Uh, menu items are the standard menu items and by standard menu items I mean non-dynamic menu items and dynamic will be explained down here. So we've got notepad calculator section 345, which you can see down here. And these menu items are separated by the slash. Now dynamic menu items, what they are is if I bring up, actually, I didn't even have to use the start button. I could have used this script. So there we go. So I've got the notepad. There is a notepad dynamic menu, which means if I bring up the tooltip while my active window is notepad, it's going to also show that dynamic menu item that shows up depending on the title that you provide. And the title that I've provided for notepad is dash notepad. And that is good enough because that's going to be fed to be used as the way to detect the window for the notepad. So notepad window. And that's possible because we have set the title match mode to partial match. Now, this is the same. So this is so the first parameter that you put in that goes into the dine one variable using the uh, legacy assignment is the name of the dynamic menu actually is right here and the window title and separated by the pipe. So this is this is the way you create additional uh, menu items. So I've got site dynamic menu that I haven't activated. So right now site dynamic menu doesn't show up. But if I run the script again, I'll be able to see that showing up here like that. Now you do have to tie 
each of these menu items to labels and therefore you have the labels here and when you create these labels you have to match the name of the menu item with the name of the label so when you create a menu item called notepad you call the label notepad as well also one other thing that you have to note is when you create these labels you have to leave out all the spaces underscore is fine but for instance ms word if i go up here this dynamic menu is called ms space word but the label itself is ms word without the space between ms and word and that's a requirement because labels should not keep spaces in them okay so let's move on to the next section let me just uh, close out of the notepad that's the hotkey and this initializes the dyn menu variable and it will start looping through the number of dynamic menu items that we have created so for instance let me just go up actually i have to uncomment this out as well because i have activated the site dynamic menu as well so if i took a screen capture of that we've got three dynamic menu items here so what this is going to do is is going to check whether dynamic and a index wrapped in percentage sign so this is going to convert into the nth iteration of the loop so the first time it's going to be one so that becomes dyne one variable which is going to be that if this equals nothing so this command if equal is probably a deprecated command and because this is this is an old script it still uses deprecated commands deprecated commands still tend to work so this script works fine the this parameter when it's left blank i think it's trying to match whether the value in here is equal to this and if it is then break out of the loop if it is not then it's going to get the string position of the pipe the pipe here get everything on the left and add it to add it to uh, this variable called item and add number two to p pass which is going to be the position of the pipe up here so this grabs all the string that sits on the left hand side of the pipe and then this command grabs everything that sits on the right side of the dyne one variable and stores that into win meaning the window title if win active the window title that we grabbed in this string with command then the dynamic menu is going to include that and i honestly don't know why this is here because this is blank at this point but this is a requirement because the slash is going to be used as a separator later on and then the item which is the name of the dynamic menu item and then it's going to loop through all three of them right but it's only really going to add to this dyn menu variable the item if the active window is the window that is on the right hand side of the pipe so it's going to loop through all of them when it hits the fourth iteration of the loop it's going to look for dyn four which doesn't exist and therefore this if statement is going to be mad and therefore it breaks out of the loop and then it goes down to sort the stuff that is stored in the menu items this is the the list of standard menu items and that's the parameter used to sort it and it sorts by alphabetical order i think and then temp menu becomes a combination of the menu items and then the dine menu that we have here which is really just starts with the slash and then the item name now it then clears out the old menu item and then creates new entries by passing through the temp menu variable which is that and this this clearing is required when you rerun the tooltip as in when you rerun the hotkey to bring up the tooltip and this loop pass temp menu 
that uses the slash as the delimiter separator it creates menu item a index which is the the end number representing the iteration of the loop and within the variable it stores the a loop field which is the names of each of the menu items and then once it goes through all of those it creates menu by first starting with the menu title and putting that into the menu variable and then it goes through this if statement to break out of the loop if the loop iteration exceeds the number of menu items and otherwise it adds one to num items variable and this is a new variable that gets created the first time the loop runs and it's the variable to store the number of menu items counted by the loop iteration so every time the loop runs the num items variable have a value of one added to it and then there is the string trim left i'm not entirely sure why this is here and why is that that is required especially the last parameter is zero so it's not really trimming anything and then within the menu variable goes in the existing menu well that's first time this is going to be the menu title and then a line break and then the menu text which is the menu item a index so this is the name of the the menu item in the first iteration the first menu item will be appended to the menu variable the second iteration will append the second menu item into the menu variable so on and so forth until such time this if statement is meant to break out of the loop and then once it breaks out of the loop it gets the mouse position and stores the x and y coordinates of the mouse position into mx and mi and then it creates a hotkey called that's to to um, allow the keys to go through and the l button is the mouse left button and then it attaches this label called menu click to this newly created hotkey and it switches on the hotkey and that is required because later down the track we're going to switch off this hotkey and um, there's going to be a constant switching on and off every time you cre create the tooltip and then this line creates that tooltip that we saw before uh, when I press the hotkey so this tooltip and then it activates the tooltip and that's required because what the label that comes down here which is attached to the left mouse button does is when you run that label it immediately will check whether the active window is uh, the tooltip or not so if the active window is not the tooltip which means you have not pressed this but you have pressed something else it will remove the tooltip and then go back to pause the hotkey gets turned off so pressing the left button will not keep running the label again and again so you bring up the tooltip and then pressing the left mouse button will run the menu click label and when you run the menu click label if you clicked anywhere else other than the tooltip it will turn off the tooltip if you click one of these items what it's going to do is it's going to get the mouse uh, position stores the x and y coordinates in these variables turn off the tooltip then it's going to do some math and this math what it's going to do is it's going to work out eventually to get a number that represents the position of each of these menu items so let me just uncomment this out so when i let me just run this again when i bring up the tooltip now my left mouse button is ready to run the menu click command here let me just get out of this one as well and run in the script again so if I press the left mouse button on the tooltip, it's going to get the position of the Y coordinate add a value of 10 and divide it by 23. So each time it adds and divides, I will make it so that it shows me a message box first. So if I press on the cow, if let's say, if I press on the select item, so the title, the MI variable is 22 and that's after a value of 10 was added so it was 12 before and it 
and and then it became 22 and then this is divided by 23 and it's because it's less than one it got rounded down to zero and when it's zero this if statement if less than uh, one then return so, therefore do nothing right and let me just go back and run the calculator and this time if I click that it calculated that my my is 31 and added a value of 10 therefore I got 41 and then divide this by 23 which will give me um, a rounded number of 1 and then it rounds down it looks like so it rounds down to the nearest integer and this number 1 is used to so my is here right so this number one goes in here and that's the menu item so it calls the menu item number one and then runs the so it removes the space and then of the menu item and then run the ghost by using the go sub command run the label that has the same name as the menu item with all the spaces removed so um, if I click that, it's going to launch the calculator app. So let me just do another one. Let me select section 5 this time. If I select that, I'll get a number and that's 124. And that's at this point here. And then hit that OK, which is after the division by 23. So I got a rounded down number of 5. And this gets fed into uh string trim left I'm not entirely sure again i don't know why this is there um especially when it's trimming nothing but what it does is it uses that number five that goes into here and then um, this forms the variable called menu item five and whatever that is stored in that menu item five uh, gets saved into target selection and then this line removes all the spaces in the target selection variable and that is used as a source to run the run the subroutine or the label and this time it's uh so it's running section five so i've run i've selected section five before right so i'll select section five there's a space here that space gets removed and it runs the label called section five and therefore get you selected five message box now if you selected so i've got this variable called num items which is created here this calculates the total number of items by counting the number of iterations of the loop and if your my your my is greater than one for whatever reason so if your my is greater than the number of items for whatever reason it's not going to do anything um, but chances are it's not going to exceed the number of items so because if you click the last one that's going to be um, calculated to have an my round it down to the nearest integer which is going to be six if you use these values you may have to update this if the math isn't working out and the, the space calculation is not accurate for you by using these numbers you might have to increase them decrease them and fit into your situation pretty much and i think uh i think that's it there's nothing else to explain that took a longer than expected amount of time to explain thank you so much if you are watching this until the end and i'll see you in the next video